okay guys so welcome back again so in this video we'll be seeing that how do we create custom controllers and custom apis using the strapi cli so for those of you who are coming here first and haven't watched my previous videos about strapi that is the part one and part two and if you don't know that what strapi is then i would highly recommend that you go and watch the part one and part two of the video otherwise it would be difficult for you to understand but if you're only here for seeing that how to use custom controllers and or how to make custom controllers and custom API, then this video is for you. So here we are inside a Strapi project and it's a default Strapi project that I created a couple of uh, videos ago. So let's start the application by doing yarn develop. And if we go to the admin UI, we see that in the content type builder, we have these content types here. Uh, some collection types here called category, post, product, and user, and some single types here called home page. And if we go to the content manager, we again have these uh, collection types and single types, uh, types, and we have data inside them. So as we see that product has so many posts, uh, so many products here. And if we go to the settings here, and if we look, have a look at the routes here for each of the each of the content types, we can see that if we go to the product route here, we see that here we have find here. And to get a list of all the products, so we have an API call here to products and which would fetches the fetches all the products. So in this video, I would be doing two things. That is currently, if we go to this API endpoint, we would be getting a list of all the products. So if we have a look here, so let me go to my REST client here. So again, if you are not coming here from the first or second video, then uh, this is the client or the REST client that I use inside VS Code, VS Code, not code. So that is called REST client. Uh, rest client so this is the extension i use to make my api calls so i have a video about this how to use this client so you can go and watch that video as well if you don't know how to use it so to get a list of all the products i need to make a api request here so if i make a request here we see that we get back a list of all the products here so we can also modify the response that this route sends that is this route forward slash api forward slash product sends so we can also modify this uh, a data here and I would be showing you this also. So before doing so, let me create a custom API here. Instead of the products, I would be creating my custom API. So before doing anything else, let me have a look at what's inside the source folder. So inside the source directory here, or should I increase the font size a little more here? So inside this source directory, I have the admin thing here, admin folder here, the API folder here, the extensions folder here. So if I expand this API folder here, so we see here that here is the collection types that we created inside the Strapi dashboard or using the Strapi dashboard. That is the cat category collection type, homepage single type, post collection type, and the product collection type. And inside the product uh, collection type, so I'm focusing on this product collection type only, not the post and the category, because like uh, if you learn one thing, then you can manage other things also. So here we have the controllers and here we have the routes. So this is the default controller or this is the default route that Strapi generates for your application. And this is the default controller that the Strapi generates for your uh, content type. That is called product here because here we can see API colon colon product and product. So this is something that is automatically created by Strapi. And in a similar way, I'm using, uh, I'm going to use a command line here that is a CL, Strapi CLI to create one more kind of an API. So let me open the terminal here and let me stop the application and let me clear it out. So what I need to do, I need to do npx strapi generate. So this is the command that we need to use to either create an API or to either create a content type from the command line or to either create a policy or to either create a middleware. There are so many things that you can do inside strapi. So let me do npx strapi generate. So here it would ask us that what do we want to generate? So we want to generate an API or a controller or a content type or a plugin or a policy or a middleware or a service. So I'm not going into details of all those things, but I'm going to keep it very simple for this video. So let's create an API here. And here we need to provide the name of an API. So for this video, I'm going to call it dogs. Though I would won't, uh, I won't be doing anything uh, related to dogs here. It is just my preference to keep the API name to be dogs here. Or let me simply call it dog here. So is this API for a plugin? No, it is not for a plugin here. So now it did something. So that uh, that means that it created these uh, files here. That is the routes, controllers, and services. If we have a look at this API folder, we see that this API folder is populated with one more folder called dogs or dog. 
And in this doc folder, we have the controllers and we have the routes and we have the services. So let's leave the services for this time. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my application again so that our application is always started. And let me also minimize the terminal here. And if you have a look at the routes folder inside the dogs, uh, uh, dogs uh, API type, we see that here we have a default uh, like uh, a, 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 or an example of a typical route that we that should be present inside this API. So let's uncomment this. So what does this route mean? So currently this route supports this method here called get. The path would be forward slash API forward slash dog and the handler for this route or the controller for this route would be dog dot example action. And then we have some configurations here. So just uh, ignore these for now. So this handler called dog dot example action should be present inside our controller file here or inside the controller directory called dog dot js. So if we go to the dog dot js file, again, we have some uh, function here that is commented out because it is for reference here only that is how to create a controller action here. So now if we save this, we see that this route forward slash dog that is a get with a get method has a handler called dog dot example action. And this example action is coming from this controller's uh, directory called dog dot js. And here is the example action. So what I can do, I can save this application and I suppose that my application is started or it is not started. So let me start the application once again and it should start. So we see that the application is started. And now what I can do, I can open my REST client here and I can make a request to forward slash API forward slash dog because that is what is present here. So I can go to my REST client and let me, uh, let me delete everything from here. Let me delete it. So I can make a call here so that get HTTP forward slash forward slash localhost forward slash dog and if I make a request here our uh, request would fail that says forbidden error. So we see that we are getting this error called forbidden error and it is because every API that you generate either from the admin dashboard or from the Strapi CLI is blocked by default or is private by default. So we need to enable this uh, API that is forward slash dog or this route called forward slash API forward slash dog from the admin panel. So we can go to our administrator panel here. And now I can go to settings. I can go to roles here. I can go to the public role here. And here we see that here we have one more API called dog. And if we expand this here, we see that this is the example action that we have. That is the example controller action. So if we enable it, that is this should be enabled in the public. Uh, this should be enabled publicly. And the route would be API dog. And if I save this and if I go back here, I can make a request here again. And this time I won't be getting a forbidden error. So if I make a request, we see that we get back a response, call, a response called OK. And this response that is OK is coming from this controller here. Uh, let me minimize. Let me close this. So this uh, response is coming from this thing here. So what I can do, I can simply say hello world like this or uh, hello dog world. So let me save this. And if I go to my REST client again, and again, if I make a request, we see that this time we get this message here that is called hello dog world. Uh, if you're wondering that uh, what is this context.body and we are not using response.send something like that. And it is because this is not express. This is Kua framework. So if you're not comfortable with Kua, then I would highly suggest that you learn Kua first and then come to like customizing Strapi. But uh, otherwise, it is super simple. That is, you can simply use context.body, uh, whatever response you want to send. So let me show you one more thing. That is, it does not matter that is in which controller you are in. You can always use any of the any of the APIs inside any controller. So let's say that from inside this uh, from inside this controller, I want to get a list of all the products that were previously there. So if I go to uh, let me make a get request just to show it to you. So get HTTP or let me copy this thing from here. API products products like this and this should fail because of forbidden error. So let me make this as public as well. 
So product find find one should be public. So let me save this. So let's go back. So let's make a request again. So we see that we get back a response of all these like uh, all these uh, products here. So we can also get back a list of all the products from this doc controller thing here because this API that is this or this product database is not only limited limited to its uh, to its API. So I would show you this thing in a moment or let me show it to you right away. So what I can do, I can say const data equal to await strappy dot entity service and we need to import the entity service in a moment. So entity service can be imported from this package called strappy. So const entity service equal to require at strappy 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 dot factories like this and now we can use this entity service to query the data inside the products collection so here we can use find many and here which api we need to use we need to use the products api so we can say api colon colon product dot product and then we need to pass in some options here so what all fields do we require inside the response so we can say we need the id we need the name, uh, we need the name uh, and we need the price, not price, but price. So let me save this and what we can do instead of context.body hello world, let me comment it out. What we can do, we can either return this also, return data also. So like this, either we can say context.body equal to data or we can simply return the data and it would be handled by Strapi uh, itself. So if I go here and if I go to oh, this route here, that is API forward slash dog. So let me make a request here. So we see that this time we get back a list of all the products, but we are getting it from the dogs route. And in the very similar way, we can modify our color controller for getting all the products from the products endpoint. That is from this endpoint. So we have this uh, endpoint that gives a list of all the products. But what if if we wanted to modify the modify the data that is coming from the products route? So what we can do, we can go to this uh, route here. We can keep it open for reference. And now we can go to this uh, collection here called product or this API called products. And here we need to create a custom route. So what we can say, we can simply say, let the core controller core router be generated by default. And here we can uh, simply modify it uh, for our own need. So we can say module.exports equal to, and this should be pretty similar to this one here. So routes would be an array here. So the first route would be method would be get path would be forward slash product or what we were using here. So we were using products here. So let's keep it products here. So products. And then we need to define in the handler. So handler would be like product dot uh, find or whatever the name you want to choose. I'm simply call, calling it find many simply like this. And then for the configuration, we can either keep it as empty or we can simply copy and paste this thing here. So this is all about this routes thing here inside the product.js file. And now we need to create a controller called find many inside the controllers for this product uh, product API. So we need to go to this uh, controller here and here what we need to do, we need to simply modify this thing here that is create core controller. So instead of simply providing in this API name here, what we can do, we have one more parameter here and this takes in a strappy as the argument here. So strappy and then we can simply say uh, async, async find many and then we have the context here that is a typical Kua context and here we can uh, do try catch so try catch like this and then if there is an error so we can say context dot body equal to error otherwise we can simply say context dot uh, body equal to not bossy but body equal to uh, my custom controller simply like this and here it is giving me an error and it is not an error it i need to simply ignore this thing from here so ignore this error message and everything should be fine so if i save this controller here and if i go to my rest client so if i make a request to this api forward slash products 
So previously we were getting a list of all the products, but this time we would be getting this my custom controller here. So if I go here and if I make a request here, so it is rejected why it is so. So we need to restart the application because sometimes if the controller is not present, the Strapi application fails. And now if I make a request here, we see that we get back a forbidden error. And it is because this, uh, this uh, controller called find many is not authorized to be publicly accessible. So if I open this once again, so let me refresh it. So let me refresh it once again. So let's go to this product here. So this time we see that we have this find many here. So we can simply click here find many to be publicly accessible. So if I save this and if I go back here and if I make a call here, we should be getting back the response here. That is my custom controller. And in the same way, what we can do, we can get the data using the docs API because you are referencing the product collection here. So we can go to this product controller here and here we can simply say const data equal to this thing. And then we can simply respond back with the data thing here. So if we save this and we make a call here, we see that we are getting a list of all the products. So this is how you can modify the diff uh, uh, typical controllers or the different routes inside the APIs that you have generated. And, uh, and I've only scratched the surface of what you can do with custom controllers and custom services and so and so forth with Strapi because like it is too much to be explained in detail. But I guess that if you just know about this thing, you know that you can manage Strapi by custom controllers. And that's only what I wanted to tell you. And guys, that's all about this video. So if you have liked the video, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for future updates. So thank you. Bye bye. Tata. Take care and have a good day and have a great day.